I will uh, finish off the flat color with this video. And then what I'm hoping to do in the next video is show you the next step, which is duotone coloring, should you want to do that, to add shadows and highlights to your existing flat color. The only flat color that remains to be done is the sleeve and the stalk of the, the plant. So let's get right to it. Do I have any existing colors that can work? I think this green could work quite well for the leaves and for the sleeve. So a lot of leaves to select individually with my magic wand. As I'm adding pixels at high resolution, the um, the file is getting much, much larger. And so processing can slow down, especially in a browser-based program. So do remember to save your work as you go. And then I think I want a darker green for the stock. So let's use this. First, I have to select it. I'm shocked that I haven't made the mistake in these videos yet of clicking outside of my line art and just filling the whole background with something. So that seems to always happen but it's easy to correct. Okay. Now there are tiny little gaps, tiny little contained shapes. And I can pick a color I want to fill that with. And then I might just need my paintbrush to get in some of these little spaces and details. I'm 400% zoomed in now, so all those little bumps you see, you know, the little white uh, artifact marks from the selections aren't going to be as visible you know, when you see it at print resolution, they'll be about this visible. But there are they are something I want to deal with. And now I think I've at least filled everything. Now I can easily readjust colors. So what do I want to do? I'm not thrilled with the color of this heart here. I think because I already have the red heart there. So I think what I'm going to do is steal this and paint it here. So once they're already painted in, you can just swap them. Uh, is there anything else? So this is kind of problematic to me. This little curl here feels like it should be a totally different color than the hair. So what I'm gonna do there is pick a color. Let's do the dark green since that doesn't appear anywhere else. So I'm going to use the eyedropper. Just hold down option because I'm using the brush tool and that chooses it. Then I'm going to cut the color where I think it should change. So it's like digitally inking but it's on the color layer. Cut the layer, the color up here as well. Hmm. Actually, it shouldn't matter now. 
And now I can just replace just that chunk with a different color. And I'm not sure quite yet what the right color would be for that. Maybe I'll try purple. But now that I've differentiated it from the colors around it, it's easy to swap in for something else. Yeah, purple works pretty well. See, I don't think that that color works necessarily, so let me swap in the dark green for that. So in an ideal world, you'd be happy with it with just flat color. And then anything else you did would just be a bonus. I don't think I'm quite there yet where I'm just happy with it. I think I want this heart to feel more subtle. So let's try the gray color. And then we have this pink that except for the tongue, I haven't used so much. That might work better for the sleeve than red. If it works better there, maybe it will work better here. And maybe even on all of these. It's catching up with me slowly. So you can see how it's really nice once you have everything filled in. Even what looks like white, like the teeth and the star, are filled in with chosen colors. It's very uh, simple to just swap and, and try different things out. Let's see. I wish traditional painting allowed for things that were this easy. And then I want a little bit more of this bright yellow through the piece. Maybe I need something kind of in between. And all of these colors can be adjusted in different steps. That are coming up. And doing more doesn't always make it better. But the beauty of digital art for me is I don't always know what I want until I see it. So it's nice to have these different options. And then I can always add a transitional color as well.
Okay, so swapping flat colors. Finding the right one. Yeah. Okay, I think I see some potential in these. So, once you have all your flat colors, you definitely want to save your work. Remember that your black line art is on a separate layer on top that can be turned off. So this is the most basic type of digital coloring. You have a blank 100% white layer at the bottom. If I want to save room for processing, I can even get rid of my sketch and my onion skin layer now. And you have your color on top of that. It's like the, the piece of cheese in a grilled cheese sandwich. And then you have your black bread on top. Now, how can you make that look as finished as possible? Well, there are ways to address if you're just going to finish with flat color. There are ways to address um, these edges if you want it perfectly clean. Like I said before, you could just select the color and then with your paintbrush, you can paint in those edges behind your black lines, like so. But because I am referencing kind of tattoo design, you'll notice that when tattoo artists fill in, they don't always fill in the whole shape. There's always kind of a slight softness to it right at the edge. And I like that look. It's almost like it's airbrushed and doesn't look so just digital. So one way to do that is to take my flat color, duplicate it. We're going to be doing a lot of that. And then I'm going to use a filter. This is the, the main filter that I think is useful in these raster programs like Photo P and Photoshop, which is Gaussian Blur. And Gaussian Blur allows you to take focus away from something and blur it out. So I'm going to not do it too much, <laughs> or everything bleeds into everything. It's like spilling water on your on your colors, and it will soften their edges. So if I do it that much, and I turn off the the one behind it, it gives me this this beautiful kind of glow around each color choice. It's still flat color. It just looks like it's kind of softly airbrushed in. And the darker the color, like inside the eyes, the more pronounced it is. So if I was going to call this like finished just as with flat coloring, I would use that technique. But then for, for those of you who, who don't want any of that, what you do is you duplicate that blurred layer. <laughs> on top of itself, and you'll get a pretty good fill. You see at the little corners where things pinch together, you'll lose it a little bit, and you'll get a slight bleed on the outside edge. But that gives you a pretty good solid fill. And to me, it actually gives kind of a, a nicer flat coloring than if you just painted everything in perfectly. And then you can merge all those flat color layers together. But I want to find kind of a happy medium. So maybe I'll just merge two of them together and take the opacity down. And then I can be pretty tricky. Whoops. I don't want to zoom in on the tools. Yeah. I will be tricky and I will just play with the flat color to finish off this video by taking the one that's at 59% and changing it from normal mode to dissolve mode. And that gives me a little bit of that hand done uh, texture at the edge. <laughs> 